Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we're gonna go over a really simple minnow pattern that I use um, below a lot of the tailwater streams here in Northern Michigan, Tippy Dam especially, uh, but it's also been effective for catching smallmouth uh, in the backwaters of Tippy Dam. And then also for all the Northern Michigan little lakes that uh, hold bluegills. I was told about fishing uh, kind of like one inch minnow patterns or the guy that I was talking to is like, hey, you ever throw one inch crankbaits for bluegills? And uh, I don't tend to throw cranks too often, but this uh, minnow pattern definitely proved effective. Uh, it's called the ice dub minnow. We'll go over the step-by-step -step process of tying this. Uh, some of my favorite colors of ice dub include silver, gold, and copper. The metallic colors of ice dub tend to be a little bit longer fiber, giving the fly a little bit better profile and length. It's harder to uh, tie these flies out of the colors like olive or peacock. Uh, the fibers are um, shorter for whatever reason, how they ever make ice dub, I'm not sure about that, but I've just taken uh, the liking of using the metallic colors as the base, and then I'll mix up the colors on the top. Uh, I'll use peacock, which is really effective, and then um, Creepy Crawly, which is my most favorite on the upper part. Gold and orange, gold and black, uh, silver and black, pink, blue, and silver. Uh, how I go about thinking about color combinations is I look at the color of the water and what light seems to be reflecting best off um, or looks good in the water. And then also I'll go about thinking about color combinations. If you ever visited the Panther Martin area of your local tackle store and look at their color combinations, it'll inspire you to do that. So anyway, a uh, great pattern to tie. This is also something that uh, if you're stuck in quarantine like we are in 2020, uh, if you got kids around and you want to teach them how to fly tie, this pattern is real simple. Also a great pattern to use with kids. Uh, I tend to use the Gamagatsu barbless hooks, which is the R18B. Uh, it was a great dry fly hook, also great size for this minnow pattern. Barbless, so if you're fishing for bluegill, easy to get in and out fishing for trout, easy to get in and out. It's definitely a pattern that's gonna catch a lot of fish. Not always your biggest fish, but just a productive uh, searching. Not that I haven't caught a, a high number of good sized trout below tippy on it, but it's definitely a numbers producer. So anyway, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna tie the silver and blue one today. So we're just gonna grab a hunk of ice dub out of the package. Kind of just reach your fingers in there and you're gonna pull some out. Kind of like separated my hands. And what I'm trying to do is just make a tail. Come here to the thread, get my distance that I want. Put it in my other hand, wrap the thread and I'm just slowly pulling it forward. And if it gets starting to get ugly, that's no big deal. It's gonna kind of turn into a fuzzball. Grab those fibers, pull them back. Wrap those down. And that gives me my base color, which is silver on this one. We're then gonna grab the creepy crawly and we're pretty much doing the same step. We're gonna come in about halfway through the minnow pattern. Again, just pull out a chunk. Less is more. Kind of come halfway through, get my distance. Pinch it in my fingers, come over the top, pull, one, two, pull, pull it back, give it a good wing, pull down, two, three, and I'm done. Uh, fry patterns, you might think of them as only a salmon fry, but we also will have steelhead fry here in a couple weeks, and then sucker fry or sucker minnows. Um, the suckers are probably starting to spawn here in most of the rivers, and when they start hatching, I've seen minnow balls in uh, minnow big <laughs> bait balls uh, and fish will tend, tend to gorge on them. We'll also see this in the backwaters for tippy uh, where smallmouth will definitely trigger on these small minnows after we half hitch this here for a second. Cut that. I'll talk about like just two ways I like to fish this fly. I'll tend to fish it by itself. I usually run 3X, one of my favorite um, fluorocarbons is by scientific anglers. Take about 18 inches of 3X. Put, I tend to use this hard shot by SureShot. 
just up there at the knot. I run a seven and a half foot leader, also 3X, tip it to 3X, put this uh, split shot right there at the knot, and I'll tend to throw that just on a five weight with a floating line. If I'm also wanting to hunt bigger trout, and bigger trout on bright sunny days can be a little bit cautious, I'll run a bigger fly in the front. This is what we call the big man minnow. And then I run about 18 inches, 20 inches, whatever that is, to the second fly. I'll run this on a sinking line. I'll tend to focus looking on this, but I'll catch a majority of my fish on the little bait if they're not chasing the big fly. So anyway, I hope this helps. A uh, really simple fly that uh, fishes for me basically all summer. Uh, it's a, also a good fly to throw behind, like if you know what a Michigan wet skunk is, and you'll catch those uh, pre-spawn brook trout later in the summer in August and September. Anyway, good luck. Be safe out there. Thanks for seeing us.